Hi everyone, I am Joy Bauman and I am a 4-H advisor in Adams County and I'm going to be talking with you this evening about making your project posters pop. Um, what makes a good project poster or display? It needs to show what you learned, it needs to be well organized, it needs to be eye-catching and easy to read, and also it needs to be neat. You need to know your project requirements, and since we're from all different counties here, I suggest that you go to your county extension website, and that is at count, whatever your county name is, .osu.edu, and you can look at your 4-H non-livestock information to find your specific project requirements in your county and follow those guidelines. For projects that require a poster, sometimes it will say they need to be a 14 by 22. That is half the size of one of those big poster boards that you see. And the projects, these are the guidelines that we use in Adams County, which pretty much align with um, the guidelines for the state fair. So um, those projects are listed here that, that use a half sheet poster size. And then some projects, um, require an educational display and that may include a poster or um, that could be something else that you take for your educational display besides a poster but once again you just need to check your county guidelines for your projects um, some other projects um, require other types of exhibits for example in genealogy instead of taking a poster you're supposed to have um, those and the word has escaped me <laughs> but the uh, uh, graphs or the charts that show your family lineage uh, for creative arts instead of a poster you take uh, what it is that you made for your creative arts projects and so forth and then some projects require a trifold display and at the state fair that is specifically for self-determined projects and um, in our county they're the only projects that should bring a trifold display to the county fair um, for all projects that require an educational display in our county, we want them to be the smaller size that you exhibit at the fair, just because we don't have enough room in our project booths to show everything. But again, follow your county guidelines. Um, here's an example of, this is one project, and this uh, member took the large display board, but then also took to their project judging a smaller poster as well. And because we can only put the smaller posters in our uh, booth at the fair, she used the smaller poster at the fair, and then she had her larger display to take um, for her project judging, and it kept it nice then after um, she was selected to go on to the state fair. So that's something that you might consider doing. So helpful tips to make a good project poster or display. Decide on your subject area to express the main thought or idea, and don't try to have your poster show everything that you've learned or done in the project, because you, as you know, we learn lots of things in our 4-H projects, and you'll have way too many things crammed into your poster if you try to show everything. So make a list to help narrow down your main points. Um, this is a good example of a project poster for a Keeping Fit uh, poster. And the, the topic that she talked about was warming up and stretching. And so you can see that that was her main point that she wanted to cover. And she had um, some text that's pretty easy to read. And she had some photos as well and some graphics that she used in this display. Select a title. You want your title to be short. You want it to be simple. And you want it to attract attention. So these are just a couple that I've um, grabbed from some posters that were uh, made by members in my own club, but uh, you can come up with a title that's something catchy, or you can have a title that is just simply uh, the title of your project. So you wanna plan your arrangement that is um, that attracts the interest of the viewer, provides a good balance, whether it's formal or informal balance, and be simple, neat, and clear, and be interesting. So this is an example of a project poster that um, does all of those things. You can see that there. 
and it's in good taste. You'd never want to put anything on a project poster that is not in good taste for 4-H um, members or for youth. You want to influence the viewer's eye. The direction of the objects and, and the way the figures face. And um, you want to lead the eye around the display and not away from it. Sometimes there's the sequence of information. If, it's, if you're teaching how to do something, you need to have those things in the right order. So you want to make sure that your poster um, directs the eye that direction. This is a little video that shows you, we'll show you, see the stitching that she has? This is a poster that she made for a project and she has stitching that went through the board that directs your eye around uh, the poster. So I thought that was just kind of clever. Again, you can just be um, as uh, creative as you would like with your project posters. You want your project poster to be attention getting. Um, you want to make it neat. No one wants to read a messy poster. Um, use information that is brief and easy to read. And again, don't try to put too much information or too many graphics on your poster and include pictures or charts if they help to explain what you've done. So here's a poster that uh, is an example that shows some pictures and charts. It has pictures, it has a, um, an actual floor, pan, floor plan for the room, and also a chart that she has on there. Then, and they're all easy to, to see and to understand what it's talking about. In this next uh, poster, this is one that really um, is eye-catching. And when you first look at it, you think, well, there's not much on there. There's these you know, pages that have just some, a little bit of text. But actually, if you look at it, they are questions and answers. And they open up with the answers to the question on the inside. So that was a really cool poster that she did. Um, how she did this. Uh, the skull in the the middle was we actually used a projector that we have and uh, put the poster up on the wall and she projected the image that she wanted and then traced it and then used a metallic silver sharpie then to color in uh, the parts of that poster so that turned out really cool and she was really proud of that poster um, Regardless of what you're doing, you want to start with a rough draft on plain paper because it will not make your parents happy if they have to go to the store at, you know, 10 o'clock the night before project judging because you somehow messed up your poster and need to redo it. So start by making a rough draft on your plain paper and no one would ever be making their project posters the night before judging, right? That never happens. Never. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but Print out um, all the text and roughly sketch out your, your graphics on your rough draft and um, figure out where you want everything to go and how it's going to fit on your poster. Check your spelling and grammar and then check it again because um, it doesn't look very good on you when you have uh, misspellings or bad grammar on your posters. And have someone else take a look at it for you to give suggestions on your sketch before you do the real thing. Um, next, we're going to talk a little about, about the letter style. Use a style that's easy to read and, you know, when you have a lot of fancy text, sometimes it's not very easy to read. So here are some samples we can look at here. And you can see some of those, can you imagine if they were on a poster, they would be absolutely awful to try to read a bunch of text. And so um, while some of these, uh, maybe one of these fancier ones like this third one down on the left that might be cute for like a heading or something like that but you would never want to do all of your text in that kind of a font so here take a look which of these do you think is the best and easiest to read are some of the samples easier to read than others and you don't have to print out your text using a computer you can handwrite but make sure that you use a plain easy to read printing when you are printing um, on your words on your poster and another thing I recommend highly is to get the poster board that has the faint uh, graphic lines on it so that you can write level and if it doesn't have that use a uh, yardstick to either make little uh, real thin uh, pencil lines across or you can just hold the yardstick there and write and stop when you get to the yardstick. 
Um, the, max, the minimum text size, you don't want a lot of tiny text. So if you think about it, if someone is looking at your is easy to read half an inch is fairly easy but when you get down much less than that it gets a lot more difficult colors let's talk about that so when you look at the colors and the colors that you use on your posters a lot of times we think oh I'll, I'll use this pretty color because that'll make it look really cool but you need to be really careful when you're using colors because as you can see and my phone is ringing um <laughs> that uh there is uh, a lot of contrast when you have a light color with dark lettering or a dark color with light lettering. But over here where you have the yellow font or the yellow lettering, you, it's hardly visible. So keep that in mind. Don't ever try to use yellow font, yellow print on anything for a poster unless it's on a really dark background. Um, and then the same way, don't use dark letters on a dark background. And this one, um, this is an example of one that um, we would make some improvements on. The idea is great. She's got the R-I-C-E spelled out and she's actually got glitter on that so it stands out and looks nice. But these um, things down the side here, these little icons that she made are a little bit, bit difficult to read. So if she was doing that over again, she said that she would make it um, so that those were a lot darker and more vibrant so that you could see them easier from a distance. So when you're making your poster or display, take your time and don't rush and be sure you spell everything correctly. Use a yardstick or a ruler. Neatness counts. And, and if you want, um, some counties have rules about this, but uh, if you want, you usually can neatly label your poster either on the front lower corner or on the back of it. Use your, your complete name, your age, your club, and the project name and level. Um, some other tips to use when you print, um, the things for your poster or when you're writing out your things, don't do it directly on your poster board or your display board. Um, use cardstock. Now you could just do it on regular paper, but I really recommend cardstock because then that is heavier and sturdier. And then when you use your rubber cement to mount it, um, it won't uh, bleed through it and, and you won't see those globby lines. So when you're using rubber cement, um, you want to make sure that you brush that out and spread it out thinly and not just in big globs because it will um, affect the coverage and, and how well that adheres. Um, sometimes some people might like to use spray adhesive, but I found that in the summertime and the humidity, it doesn't want to stick and it will fall off. And glue sticks are the same way. They hold for a little while, but then they'll start to fall off. So it's really sad when you get to project judging and your poster starts to fall apart. So um, Mount your, another tip is to mount your text and photos on a contrasting color. So here she used, it was just a different color of cardstock, but you could use construction paper. Um, that way it gives it something else to mount it to and it makes it like stand out a little bit and just makes for a really nice looking poster when you do that. The final thing I want to talk with you about is after you've done all this work to um, create a poster, you want to keep it nice. And so these are some ways that you can store your poster. This one. Um, on the top right, that's a, a carrying bag, a poster storage bag that I've had for a long time. I used to have two of them, but um, one of them got destroyed in a flood in my basement. <laughs> but that one was nice for holding just regular size posters. I got that for, I don't know, I think it was about $17 or $18 at like a teacher supply store. Um, so that's something nice that you can get to keep your posters in. The one on the left is something that one of my kids rigged up when they were going to a, a conference and had to take a poster with them and we didn't have a a carrying case that it would fit in at that time and so she took uh, that is the foam board poster board and duct tape and she made her own poster carrying case and because I just wanted to show you this she had used glitter on her letters and so she used just an old piece of it was it just happened to be black a poster board that we had that she laid in there so that those letters didn't rub together and, and cause all the glitter to fall off. 
On the lower right hand corner is another carrying case that I have. I got that after we had the flood in our basement. And this one is actually really large and it is great because I can keep um, posters that my kids have made that they're taking to project judging with them. I can keep old posters in it or I can keep um, poster board and poster making supplies in that. It's, it's really big. One tip for if there's any advisors listening is when you go to project judging, if you get to have face-to-face -face project judging, I like to have uh, the kids in my club just go ahead and give me their posters at the end of the project judging day that day, and I put them all in this big uh, carrying case uh, tote thing, and we that way I already have them to put in the display at the fair, and I don't have to worry about people remembering to bring their posters to me. Um, that one that was rather large, it was about $70, but it, I felt it was a good investment. I've used it for about 10 years now already, um, so I feel like I've gotten my money's worth out of it. You can get one that's a little bit smaller than that for about $45 or $50. Um, you want to represent yourself and your club well. Your poster and display will be exhibited throughout the fair week usually, and so many of your friends and family will see it. Um, you want to do your best to make sure that that poster is educational and visually appealing. Does anyone have any questions?